Hi everyone, it's Tony. Today we're going to be doing this halo eye using the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction Palette. I never thought I would be the type of person to own a Pat McGrath palette. Very expensive. Okay, $125. <laughs> I did get mine on sale. That being said, it was still $87. Okay. But after opening it, seeing the packaging, seeing the quality, I understand why they are priced the way they are. And after having lots of friends tell me that it was worth it, and then I was watching Julia Adams, and she was talking about how she can always tell when somebody's wearing a Pat McGrath shimmer because they're that good, and she's right. So if you do have the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction Palette and you want to follow along with my little tutorial to get this halo eye, then... Let's get into it. This is what the package looks like. The artwork is so, so cool, absolutely beautiful. I already took the palette out, so one sec. This is what the palette looks like. It is very sturdy, hefty, thick plastic packaging. I definitely see where the price point comes from because of this. When you open it up, there is a mirror on the inside, and then these are the shadows. Absolutely stunning. They have quite a few colors that have a shift to them. There are only a few matte shades, which makes our options limited to doing a whole look with one palette, but we can make it work. First, I'm going to put some concealer on my eyes. This is the Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer. Then I'm just going to take this MAC Highlight Contour Palette and use the cream shade here to set my eyes. On this fluffy brush, I'm going to take this brown shade and I'm going to work that in the crease. You can always build up a shadow, so I just take a light hand and take my time to really work it in and blend it. Next, I'm going to take this flatter brush and this darker brown right here and put that on the outer corner. I'm just patting it in at first to build up the pigment and then I'll go in and blend. I like to go above my natural crease because I have such deep set eyes that I feel like if I don't bring it above my crease, you won't be able to see it. Again, just take your time adding the pigment to be the desired color that you want. Then I'm putting just a little bit on the inner corner because this is a halo eye. Now I'm just taking that same fluffy brush and the first shade we used to lightly connect the two corners together. I'm gonna take some of my concealer on the back of my hand and use this tiny brush to pick some of it up and just go over the center part of the lid where we're gonna be putting a shimmer so that it will pop a little bit more. You don't need barely any concealer for this. A little bit goes a long way and you can just tap it out so there's no harsh lines. Now I'm gonna take the NYX glitter glue and put that over where we put the concealer. I'm gonna take this shade right here. It is like a pink and gold shift color and I'm gonna put that on my finger and then just put that in the center of the lid. Next, I'm gonna take this flat brush and that first brown shade we put in our crease and I'm just going to pat where the outer corner meets the shimmer to blend that together. Same with the inner corner here. And one more time, I'm gonna take the fluffy brush and the original brown shade, just a little bit of it to blend everything together. With blending, it's all about taking your time and doing very light motions. Just to amp up the shimmer, I'm gonna take this white shade that has some yellow flecks in it and put that right at the center of the lid. Yeah, you can tell the difference. I have this sample of the Ulla Henriksen Banana Bright Primer. It's fine, it's just a moisturizing primer. I'm just trying to kind of use it up. Now I'm taking the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I just kind of work that right in my cheek area, which is where my pores are most visible. So this kind of fills them in a little bit, gives a smoother appearance. I didn't used to be a fan of pore filling primers, like especially the silicone ones, because I just thought they made my makeup look bad and made my skin feel slimy almost, but the texture of this dries down pretty well and I don't have that problem. I'm gonna take my Becca under eye corrector in light medium and just put that in the inner corner of my eye here and right where my lines are most prominent, I have pretty hollow under eyes, so this just helps brighten everything up. 
Today I'm going to use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation. The original one of these was way too matte for me. I have dry skin, so that was too much. And it does smell like paint. Um, this one does not have that strong of a fragrance. But I don't think that it is that dewy. It's not my favorite. I feel like it looks good for the first couple of hours, but after that it starts to look a little bit dry and separate. And because it dries down so quickly, I feel like I have to work in sections when I put it on. Next, I'm taking my Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick and this Real Techniques, so I think it's a setting brush. And I just put that right above the hollow of my cheek, kind of right where the bottom of my cheekbone is. I put a little bit on my temples just to make everything cohesive, but I have a relatively short forehead, so I don't feel the need to contour or make it look smaller. I'm gonna go in with the First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer. I like to put my concealer on after I do the cream bronzer because I feel like it just helps tie everything together, make it cohesive when I blend it out so it's not too harsh. I'm gonna take the Hourglass Mineral Veil Translucent Powder. Because I have dry skin and I don't want this to look too dry throughout the day, I usually just set underneath my eyes very lightly. And then I just take whatever's left and I put that around where I'm gonna be putting my powder products on my cheeks. I'm gonna go back into that MAC Contour Palette. I'm gonna take these two shades right here, mix them together. And I'm gonna put that right in the hollow of my cheek. I use a back and forth motion to set the product down and then I'm gonna go in with circular motions going upward to blend it out. Back and forth and blend. Moving on to blush. I have this Tarte blush palette that I got forever ago. I'm gonna take this dark berry shade here. I always put on more blush than I think I need to because it's the first thing to disappear throughout the day. So I focus a lot of it up here, closer to my temple. And then whatever's left, I smile and put that on my cheeks. I'm gonna go in with the Anastasia Amrazy highlighter. This was limited edition, so you can't get it anymore. I'm very sorry, but it's a beautiful gold highlighter that is very subtle and works even on my fair skin. And I feel like you can't go overboard with it. Like it's very forgiving. A little bit on the nose. Then I'm just gonna take this brush and kind of blend the blush and highlight together. No harsh edges, of course. Next, I'm just gonna take a flat brush and the darker color that we put on our outer corner. And I'm gonna bring that underneath the lash line about halfway. I'm gonna take this pencil brush and the first brown shade and just smudge that out and bring that all the way in. I'm gonna take the highlighter we used in this very small brush and just put that in the inner corner. I'm gonna use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I have to get very close to my mirror to do my mascara and my eyebrows, so I'm gonna do those off camera and I'll be right back. For our lips, I'm gonna use this very well-loved NYX lip liner in the shade Natural. I use this pretty much every time I wear a lipstick. I'm just gonna fill in my lips with this. Kind of messily. Then I'm gonna take the original Fenty Gloss Balm in Fenty Glow. And this is the final look. Pretty simple. The shimmers in this palette will go with so many looks, so I think that I will definitely still be getting a lot of use out of this palette, even if I have to use other palettes to get the look that I want. Let me know what eyeshadow palette you've been loving right now, and until then, I will see you next time.